Good morning, caring community. Welcome. It's a beautiful day outside, and we are going to sing about a glorious day to open up. So if you would please rise if you're able and help me sing this one.
Jesus is mine. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sin far away. Rising, he justified. Free me forever. One day he's coming for oh, glorious day. Find somebody and greet them in the name of God. <laughs> name of Jesus. Good morning. How are you? Good. Laughing. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> just, just, no idea. No, not yet, not yet. All right, good morning, caring. They don't listen, they don't listen to either one of us. Good morning, caring. <laughs> right. yeah. Well, I know you hear us, you just don't pay attention. That's the problem, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is, uh, this is Tag Team Family Life. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start and then hand it off to Shell, and we just want to get this out of the way right away. Um, this is January 8th, so we've been a week into the new year, and usually on January 1st is where you, when you make New Year's resolutions. And you make these resolutions, and it's, and it's kind of a domino effect as to when they're going to fall. So we want to get one of them out of the way right away. Okay, this is, <laughs> this is a New Year's resolution. It's about to fall. Okay, so we want to just give you freedom now because... You, you pretty much lost that resolution, brother. So have freedom to eat about the country. There you go. All right. <laughs> that, that was staged. Yeah, yeah, I did. And I actually had one of them, too. 
and it was very good. <laughs> what? We had two. I had, I had one of those. The other one I had was before those. So I didn't lie. They were good. They were good. That was awesome. That was awesome. Hey, praise God. Thank you, worship team, for that song. That's one of my favorite songs. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Whew. Hey, we got a lot to praise, praise the Lord for, obviously. And we're going to hear more about it in the Word today. But those of you who uh, participated in Angel Tree this Christmas, and, you know, I've always stood up here and said this is a giving church, and that tradition continues, not just Christmas time, but all year round. But this particularly was Angel Tree, and they sent an awesome thank you note, and I, I know no better way to do it but to read it to you for those who participated. This year we had two partners a local church, that'd be us, and a small business joined in the requested angel tags. With their participation and your generosity, it made this year our biggest year yet. We were able to provide for three families and seven individual youth. Today, all the families came in to receive their gifts, each one of them blown away by your generosity. Because of you, the children received clothing, PJs, books, toys, blankets, shoes, stockings, and more. Our moms received journals, PJs, a gift card to their favorite store, and a gift card for groceries. We were greeted with the hugs and tears and the overwhelming thank you that I am so happy to share with you. Two of our families walked into our office with an unknown feeling about the future. One received an unexpected bill and another just lost their job. Today, we might not have solved their problems, but we provided peace and assurance that this Christmas, their children will have gifts under the tree to open, and they'll be able to purchase groceries. Imagine being in such a desperate situation, whether you're going to get groceries or not. This Christmas morning, we encourage you to take a moment and remember, because you chose a tag, and together as a whole group, we're able to provide a blessing to families who need to feel peace, love, and joy this Christmas. Thank you for your overwhelming generosity this Christmas season. Praise God for those of you who give and you all do all the time. Another praise is, you know, we've been struggling with heat. Praise God that he's given us a couple warm Sundays. This with a beautiful sunshine today. But uh, we also had a, we've been praying about our heating situation all three of those heat pumps outside are going to be replaced, hopefully, this coming week. And we got, we got uh, three, at least three estimates, and we're obviously going with the lowest one, which was $8,000 than our first one. So what we need to, to make it all happen, each of these heat pumps are covered with a wooden uh, structure on it, we have to get those removed. And as soon as we can do that, the sooner we get the new hunting heat pumps in. And uh, so if anybody can help out with that as, as early as tomorrow, please see me after the service. We'll try to put together a group and get that done. It shouldn't take very long. It wouldn't take out some screws, pick it up, move it off the side. So if you can help with that as early as tomorrow, please let me know. We'll, we'll decide what time that's going to be, if it's better in the later afternoon or first thing in the morning, we'll, we'll, we'll work that out. But please see me after the service because it's a praise. And then the financing part of it is because of relationships with the ERC, our conference and the home mission. They're going to provide us the upfront front to finance, and then we'll make payments back to them. But uh, they financed this whole church. We paid it off in, in record time, and we're going to do the same with the heat pump. But they are providing that. Uh, for us. So praise God. Thank you for your prayers for that. And we're going to be warming up in here soon. Everybody comfortable now, though? It's good. It's good, though. All right. Praise God. Hey, pay attention to your, to your uh, bulletin. I just want to highlight some things. The greeters ministry needs some help. We've got some awesome greeters out there now, but uh, we need some more. We also need somebody to coordinate that. 
if you just go to the Lord and pray about that, and if you're called to do that, just uh, let the church office know. Other things happening, the church mailbox today is the last Sunday. If you, if you want a mailbox, you don't have one right now, please let Lorraine know. You can either email her, call her, because she's going to be reorganizing, put them in alphabetic order, change a few things. So let her know today, today. Check out the youth, youth events coming up. We've got a game night for our youth group on Friday the 20th here at the church. Keep that in mind. Invite your friends. ERC is looking for a, for a uh, executive director. There is a prayer guide out on the Welcome Center. Be in prayer about that. They have a search committee, but they are asking us to pray and pray and pray some more. So keep that in mind. You can check out the rest of the bulletin for, for other highlights, what's happening around the church. Uh, hands and feet going out today. Uh, so we're going to lift them up in prayer. But I want you to take notice to the, to the new trailer that's out there uh, and the new steps to it, the porch. Uh, that was provided by Brandon Good. He's Steve and Jean's son-in-law. Brandon and Dean, Dean used to be, a, and their family used to be a part of Caring Community. But he's still, there's still much a part of it in the heart. And Brandon did that, that work himself and donated all the materials and trailer himself. He brought it, he, that's, that's what he does for work. And he was, he was glad to still be a part of this church and be helping in such a way. So uh, I just want to, I want to thank him publicly for that. He did an awesome job. I want to praise the Lord for, for his servant's heart. And uh, they're going to be putting it to use here shortly. So soon we get some electric in there. So praise God for that. So let's let's give uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, you you are so faithful. We count the ways. In the song, Lord, you living, you loved us, dying, you saved us, paid the price for our sins, Lord, and you're gonna come back on that glorious day and take us to be with you for all eternity. Lord, just those words coming out of my mouth, that we, we could wake up every day and be grateful for just that. But you are, you are alive and well. And you are moving in our midst. We see it. We see it through little things like Angel Tree, how we can bless people we don't even know, people that are hurting, desperate situations. And Lord, you use us to bless them. Lord, I pray for each one of those families that receive gifts, that they would, uh, if they don't know you, Lord, I pray that they would be stimulated to search for you. As your word says, search and you will find. Because, Lord, what they truly, truly need is not a Christmas gift, but they need Jesus, the greatest gift of all. So, Lord, I pray that that's, your spirit is already working in their lives. Lord, I thank you for men like Brandon Good who loves you serves you gives so generously loves his wife loves his family obeys you in all he does so Lord I ask a special blessing on Brandon let him know that we are grateful for how you have used him and his, his desire to serve you by helping us and Lord that trailer he set up is for the hands and feet because they have chosen to serve others to serve you by serving others and those others Lord are desperate people can't imagine going through a winter in a, in a tent can't imagine just trying to do the basics of getting up and cleaning up and brushing your teeth and all this within the confines of a tent somewhere in, in the woods in Harrisburg. Lord, thank you for, for all the people that serve through hands and feet and their desire to just love on people that are in depths of despair. I pray, Lord, that you would give them life-giving words. And those, those words would penetrate the ears and the eyes and the hearts of the people they are serving. And Lord, those words would change, change lives. That's what they truly need. That's what we all need. 
Lord, I pray as a church, we continue to give, but we continue to receive what you have for us. Trans transforming our lives. Lord, the transformation process is sometimes hard, but it is needed in each and every one of us. I pray for that stubborn heart now today that might be sitting in this room that you would break that, that barrier down and allow that person, him or her, to see exactly who you are and what you have to offer them. Lord, it is a life and death matter. I pray that you would continue to transform us all, that the lost world around us, all those who encounter us, would see the living hope that we have in us. Let each one of our lives be a shining light of your glory. Lord, that's what we, we owe you because of living you loved us and dying you saved us. May you be glorified today in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Worship team. If you're able, please rise <coughs> as we sing. Yours is the glory, yours is the glory. 
Um, birth the prayer wall in Kendall and Rochelle in the name of Jesus. And uh, so I, w I want us to take advantage of not just singing the song, but actually acting in it. And so if there's something you need to add to the prayer wall, the markers are back there. You can do that if you need to come to the cross. If, you know, you just want to be anointed and pray with or have us pray for you about an issue, let's, let's pray and let's respond in the name of Jesus. Carry, during the song, if there's somebody, I mean, there's a number of people in our lives that we're praying the move of Jesus into their lives. Use the song as the catalyst for that. Don't just sing the words. Let's live it out and let's pray and respond in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Speak the name of Jesus over you In your hurting, in your sorrow I will ask my God to move I speak the name, cause it's all that I can do. In desperation, I'll seek heaven and pray this for you. I pray for your healing, that circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I speak the name of all authority, declaring blessings, every promise. He is faithful to keep. I speak the name no grave could ever hold. He is greater. He is stronger. He's the God of possible. I pray for your healing, that circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee. In Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. Come believe it. Come receive it. Oh, the power of his spirit is now forever yours. Come believe it. Come receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. All things are possible. Come believe it. Come receive it. For oh, the power of His Spirit is now forever yours. Come believe it. Come receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus, all things are possible. I pray for your healing, that circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee. In Jesus' name, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. I pray for revival, for 
for restoration of faith. I pray that the dead will come to life in Jesus' name. I pray for revival, for restoration of faith. I pray that the dead will come to life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see the promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak. Fear may come, but fear will leave. You lead my heart to victory. are my strength and you always will be I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life I see your promises in fulfillment all over my the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless, all my sin rolled away, because of you, oh Jesus, see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless, all my sin rolled away, because of you, oh Jesus, oh I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Why should I believe? The evidence is here. Why should I fear? Oh, the evidence is here. Why should I fear? The evidence is I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Father, we see the evidence 
Mm. It's everywhere. We just need to look. Mm. We just need to keep an open mind and keep our hearts tuned to you, Lord. Mm. In the beauty of the weather and and just the creation that you have demonstrated your power, it's just amazing everywhere we look. Lord, and and how you made us so intricately and so lovingly and you knit us together, knowing exactly what you wanted us to be. Lord, I just thank you for the blessings that you give us and thank you for loving us the way you do and dying for us and rising again and saving us from our own sin. Lord, I just ask that you would be with Pat as he brings the message today, that you are a living hope And Lord, we just praise you and thank you. And we're just so glad that you are our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello. As the kids come up, uh, I want to clarify something I said last week. I called uh, Satan a sissy punk. And I heard little Clara had a little Clara had a uh, laugh over that. But to be serious, he's only a sissy punk if we are operating in the power of Jesus. Peter, which is the book we're studying, Chapter 5 tells us he's like a he's like a roaring lion seeking to devour us. So if we try to face him on our own, it'll be a dangerous thing we do. So let's uh, let's operate. Let God to, let allow God to transform us so we're always operating in the power of Jesus Christ. Good, Sheldon. Thank you. He may be a sissy punk. He's powerful. Don't take don't take him for granted, and uh, understand that the one in us is greater than the ones in the world. Okay, is more powerful. So let's let's pray the reality. That word, that just that evidence, um, in the lives of these kids. Lord, thank you and. Just pray you would um, give them eyes to see at, at their age, in their perspective, with their hearts of faith. Give them eyes to see your, your faithfulness, the evidence of who you are, your, your presence, your promises, your power. Give them eyes to see the evidence of that now in their lives so that they are more strongly positioned. Thank you for their families, their parents, grandparents, people that pour into them. Thank you for our teachers that pour into them. God, may, may it, through the move of your spirit and the truth of your word that will be presented, give them eyes to see and hearts to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Go get them. <clears throat> Thanks, Virgil. It's nice to have you back in the house. Good to be back in the house. Always. Always. <clears throat> Bobby prayed about living hope. So where, where exactly is your hope this morning? That's what I want to talk about today. Last Sunday, we, we started our journey in First and Second Peter. And, and uh, I think maybe what we probably ought to initiate here at Caring is a, is a pool, a, a church pool. And you guys can sign up for where you think I'm going to end any given sermon on, on uh, what scripture, and then whoever wins, I'll, I'll take you to breakfast, or we'll do something like that. But this is always a kind of a debate about how far I will or won't get. Just remember, it's not how far we go, it's how much we're changed, okay? We will get through first and second Peter, but the issue is not how fast, it's how much we're changed. But Peter is writing to the church, and he's looking back He looks from the perspective of looking back on the process of God's transformation in his life from phileo love to agape love, transforming him, maturing him, empowering him to be able to stand. 
in the face of persecution. We were talking about that in Sheldon's office in the prayer time before the service, about the growing persecution that is happening, not only in the world for Christians, but in this country. It's happening, it's coming, and, and Scripture says that it is going to. So how, how do we stand? Well, we stand, Peter says, in our identity. We stand in our identity as the elect, those who are called. And just a quick review of that, the elect, those who have received salvation through faith in Jesus. That's who we are. We're called by God. We're actually, it's, the word called is an invitation, as, as in an invitation to a banquet, like the banquet supper of the Lamb, which will be the greatest banquet we've ever had, ever been part of. But it's that invitation to embrace the salvation of God. And that becomes the foundation from which we live our lives. All of our decision-making, the filter through which we take in information in the world, all goes through the foundation of the fact that we are God's elect. We are saved by Jesus. That's how we stand then. And this is a huge issue for us because it is the ongoing relationship with Jesus, the work of his Holy Spirit in us, and our fellowship together that helps us stand. It's how he's put us together. God empowers us to do that. It is the transformation. It's the sanctifying work of the Spirit. We read about that last week. Transforms us. It's a growing, continual work of His grace and peace. Grace, the power for us to be and do what we can't be and do on our own, and His peace, His presence in the midst of all the challenges that we face. Grace and peace. So it will surprise you to know that on Thursday, Beth and I were at a coffee house. Sometimes that's where we hang out to, to study. And so we were at a particular coffee house, and I look up, which she's studying, I'm studying, I look up on a shelf, and here's this sign. Grace and peace. And the sign. It's like, ah. so I took a picture of it. I mean, God suspenders in a belt. God's trying to make this apparent to us. Everywhere we turn, it is a move of his grace and peace in our lives. So let's pick it up from there. First Peter chapter one. Let's look at verses three to five. We'll see how far we get. First Peter 1, start at verse 3. And Peter, I, I, you want to talk about a guy that packs a lot into a sentence? It's this guy. There is a whole lot packed into every sentence that he writes. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. If you and I can grip five, three through five, we will live our lives differently until Jesus returns. The promises embedded in that are absolutely extraordinary. They are supernatural. And Peter starts, knowing that, Peter starts with praise. He says, I praise you. That is his and our true and first response to God's mercy. Our response to his mercy is praise. That's what Romans 12, 1 says. In view of God's mercy, offer yourselves as living sacrifices to, to the Lord. Our whole life is a life of praise because of his mercy. What is his mercy? Mercy, the Greek word elios. It is the kindness. It, it's, it's, it's more than just kindness. We think of mercy as, oh, I feel bad about what's happening in someone. It's a whole lot more than that. It's his kindness or goodwill towards the miserable and the afflicted. Do you know that apart from God, that's us? We tend to look at the miserable and afflicted as those with physical manifestations that are worse than ours, so they're miserable and afflicted, and it certainly includes that. But spiritually, the miserable and afflicted are everyone who does not have Jesus, and that was us, and even though we have Jesus, sometimes it still can be us based on the things that we are currently going through. But it is not just a kindness and goodwill. It is joined with a desire to help them, the outward demonstration of the kindness. 
So God loves us, God cares about us, and he does something about our need. He sees the need, he has a heart for the need, and he acts upon the need. He does something. What is it that he does? He redeems us. He redeems us in Jesus by what Jesus did on the cross. Died and was resurrected again, demonstrating that what the, the price that was paid is paid in full. So God has demonstrated his mercy. That gives us new birth. New birth, which provides living hope. Everything is connected to what Jesus did on the cross for us, to him coming for us because of his love for us. So let's talk about new birth. New birth, Jesus to Nicodemus in John 3, 7. You must be born again. Remember the word must? The necessity lying in the nature of the case. The nature of the case is just being alive will not save us. We need a new spiritual birth. And that new spiritual birth happens at salvation. Paul writes it in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. We're actually a new creature. All right? We're new. It's brand new, different, not something that you can make happen in your own strength here in the world. The new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. It's the power of salvation. Colossians 2.13, when you were dead in your sins, God made you alive in Christ. And all the time, we are physically alive. There are people physically alive walking all around us all the time, and they are dead. Dead in their sins. He makes us alive. It's a different life. It's a new life, new birth. It's something only God can do. And that is what gives us hope. Hope, the word el peace, expectation of good. Hope, joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. Look at this. And it's not rooted in a circumstance. It is rooted in a person. Rooted in the one who is its foundation, the thing hoped for. So when we get saved, there have been people who have been vastly disappointed because they've been told that when they get saved, everything in their lives is going to be absolutely fine. It's all going to be good. And so when that doesn't happen, they, they lose their hope because their hope was placed in a mind's eye set of things that they thought would happen, and, they, and it's, not, it's not the biblical definition. Hope is not in a particular set of circumstances. Hope is in a person, in Jesus. Bless you. Hope is in the person of Jesus Christ. It's rooted in him. Peter calls this then a living hope because Jesus is alive and we, we are in him. Our hope is also alive. Living is the word, the, the noun is zoe. The verb version is zao. Same thing. It is to enjoy real life. So there's real life in God and there's also fake life. Life that we think is real, but it's not. We are deceived by the enemy into thinking that life is real when, in fact, there is a real life, and that life is in God. It is to enjoy real life, true life worthy of the name, follower of Jesus, Christian, active, blessed, endless in the kingdom of God, having vital power in itself and exerting the same upon the soul. So there are two words we notice by now, I hope, and if not, we'll review it. Two words for life in the Bible. One is bios. It's where we get biology. Everyone that you come across with today is bios. If they're alive and breathing, they are, they are bios. They're alive. But not everyone is Zoe. Zoe is the life of God. That's what Jesus gives us. And he says that's the hope. It is a living hope. It's the hope of our life in Jesus. He is our hope. He is alive. Therefore, it's his presence, it's his power, it's his promises that sustain us and his coming return that will bring all of it to conclusion. Psalm 33, 20. We wait in hope for politicians to get it together. No. 
We wait in hope for the weather to get better. No. We wait in hope for the outcome of the Eagles game today. No. 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 All right, so there's Dave. It's going to start. It's going to be an ugly day, you Cowboys and Eagles fans. Let's get, just get it. Let's get it out there. No, we wait in hope for the Lord. He, not, not, not a circumstance, He. He is our help and our shield. He is. And the word wait in the Hebrew is a completed action, which means as you are waiting, you are waiting as if it's already done because it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. Okay? We're waiting on a sure thing. We have a living hope. And our hope is rooted in a relationship with Jesus, not in your particular circumstances at the time. I can't emphasize that strongly enough because that has stolen the life and the hope away from so many believers. I thought following Jesus would be fill in the blank, and it's always about circumstances favorable to us. And that's just not always the case. We face tough times. The whole point is that we have this vital, powerful life in him now and for eternity, regardless of the circumstances. That's the promise. It's why he came. He came to give us his life. Sin blocks that life. Jesus came to destroy sin's hold and give us his vital life. And it's why he's coming again. Bring it all to completion. That's what's going to happen. You have a lot of people that will write a lot of things. You can go on any podcast. Here's what's going to happen. That's going to happen. Watch this. Watch that. All these prognosticators. Let me tell you up front and online. Here's what's going to happen. Jesus is coming back. And he's going to bring everything he has promised to full completion. That's the promise of Scripture. That is our living hope. So, if that's a living hope, what is Peter also implying? That there is a dead hope. That there is a dead hope. Remember verse 1 last week? We are strangers in this world. We're not of this world even any more than Jesus is of this world. In fact, in 1 John 2, 17, touched on it last week, the world, the systems of the world, the values of the world, the operating power of the world, and its accompanying desires pass away. For some of us, some of that can't pass away fast enough, right? The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. So there are things in this world under the control of the Antichrist, and his way of operating is deceit. So they present themselves as hope that will last. If you just put your hope in me, if you put your hope in this, if you follow this, if you pursue that, you will have this hope. It's presented as if it is hope that will last, but it does not. It can't deliver because it is dead hope. What are a few of them? Well, let's start with the obvious one, wealth. How many people put their hope in wealth, in how much we have? That's the draw. When you drive by Walmart on 322, why do you think the billboard for Powerball and Million, Mega Mill, why do you think it's like 100 feet tall? The draw is, if I would just win, what? I would have enough money to cover any circumstance that happens. That's the draw. It's not that you could just you know, buy, you, okay, you get that much money, you could buy four or five or ten cars, whatever. Okay? That's not the issue. The motivating factor underneath that is I would have enough money to be able to control anything that happens. I could buy my way out of virtually anything. That's the dominating thought. It's a dead hope. It's a dead hope. Have we, have we figured that out yet? All it takes is a housing crash. All it takes is inflation. All it takes is a war. All, that's all it takes. And all of a sudden, all that money, that savings, that hope, it's gone. It can evaporate very quickly. Loss of a job. Boom. Okay? 
We have put our hope in science. I had an interesting conversation with my oncologist when I went for the, for the surgery after my melanoma. She's like the head of oncology at Hershey Medical Center. She's sent, since left. I don't know why. Maybe it was me. <laughs> and she said, we went in, and she said, well, I, I, and, and keep in mind, this is my personal walk with the Lord, okay? If you're on the medicine, I, I'm not disputing that. Understand it up front. But, but she said, we want to put you on Keytruda. And I went, I don't want to go on Keytruda. She was like, why? Well, I said, I've read all the side effects. And Keytruda is for someone who is in active cancer. And my scans are clear. Mine's not active. We want to put, a, put it on you just in case. I went, no. I prayed and God said, this far you may come and no farther. I'm not doing that. She did not know what to do with me. She's like, she, I mean, really, she didn't know what to do. And that's just, so she talked about how great Keytruda was because the previous medicine, science, the previous medicine that they absolutely thought was the answer and they prescribed it for years is a medicine called interferon. Interferon, that was the go-to medicine based on science. What they found was patients on interferon were committing suicide. Not, be, not because their cancer was still there, because of the side effects of the medicine. But it was the go-to medicine. Now science, now Keytruda is the go-to medicine. You see, science is always catching up to God. Always. There's a principle called the principle of irreducible complexity. Yeah, I know. I know. I studied a little. Yeah. And, and what that says is, if you take the cell, which is the building block of how you and I are made, the building block of life, if you take the cell and you reduce it down to the simplest form that we can understand and view, it is still so incredibly complex, it could not have happened by chance. Impossible. It is so intricately designed, it had, it had to have been designed. That's at its simplest form that we can understand. This could not have happened by chance. Couldn't have. If, you, if you're a science person, you say, ah, I'll follow science. Read Michael Behe. And you better be ready to have your brain stretched. Michael Behe, B-E-H-E, okay? He'll, he'll, go, he'll go to science route with you. Our hope, our hope is in science? Ten years ago, they, it, no. Our hope is in education. We're spending more now than we ever have before with less results, less function, less ability. Well, our, our hope is in health. If you have your health, you have everything. Do you read the prayer journal and pray it? Do you, do you see how fast that can change? Have you read the story of Damar Hamlin? Right? Young kid in his 20s, professional athletes like, like they're they're like machines, they they're doctored. They got this diet thing and exercising. I mean, they're like the healthiest people on the planet. And he takes a normal tackle in a normal game, and it goes into heart failure. It can change. Like that. Like that, it can change. What about power, and success, and influence? Is your hope in that? It's a dead hope. What about relationships? How many of us, I'm saying us included, how many of us have made really poor decisions trying to hang on to a relationship in a way that was falling apart and God's going, stop sign, stop sign, stop sign, stop sign. We just keep blowing through them, right? Because we're gonna, we need this relationship. We're going to hold on to this relationship, but it's toxic and poison. Our hope is in the relationship. I love my wife. For, we're, on, we're on year 42. But can I tell you something? And it's true for her for me. My hope is not in Beth. My, my, my worldly physical love is for Beth. And I want the absolute best for my hope is in the Lord. Because if I hope in her and she hopes in me, guess what? That's a pedestal I should never put her on. Or anybody else. Our hope is in the Lord. All these things are temporary. Where is your hope? Where's your hope? Jesus promises an inheritance that cannot perish, spoil, 
or fade. Cannot indicate. This, this is a statement of fact from God. It's kept in heaven. It is shielded, mean guarded, protected by God. I would love to see somebody break into God and take what's his. Good luck with that. It's passive voice. He does it for us. He guards it. He protects us. Now, there's a saying, and maybe you've used it. I've used it. Beth and I have used it with each other. Don't write a check you can't cash. That's true physically, but it's also true relationally and, and decision-wise, right? Okay, I get a call. You can do this. Oh, I can do that. I'll do that. I can, hey, I'll do that. I'll be there. I'll do that. And Beth goes, don't write a check you can't cash. You can't be in four places at one time, Right? Don't make promises that you can't keep. The day after Christmas, I turned 67. Yeah, I did. I got a woo on that. All right, thank you. <laughs> That's what I also did that on my birthday. You're 67. Woo. But according to the government, I am, I've reached the full age of retirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. <coughs> I'm not retiring anytime soon. But I'm at that age. And so I've been, I'm going to put this generously, I've been paying into, they've been taking Social Security for over 50 years. So I'm thinking, I'm going to start drawing it. Because they guarantee it'll be there forever. And I'm not, so, I'm not, my hope is not in Social Security. So I called, I thought, so I called Social Security. I said, this isn't a hard thing. I've been, they've been taking this for over 50 years. I'm going to call and get it started. So I called Social Security office. I was on hold for 41 minutes. Never talked to a human being. So I thought, I'm going to go in person. So I got in my little car. I drove down to the Lebanon Social Security office. Went online. These are the hours. This is when it's open. Went up. I'm ready for my appointment. I'm going to walk in there. Big sheet on the paper. We're closed today. <laughs> Come back another day. Now, I just wonder when you get your paycheck, if you could put a sign and say, my paycheck's closed today. You can't take any. Wouldn't work. Wouldn't work. So I went back another day. You want to talk when you do this. It's an entire morning that you shoot. You understand that, right? It's an entire morning. It's gone. So I drive back down again. This time they're open. You're going to take a number, and they spray you down, and it, it, it's crazy. So I, finally get to, so I finally get to the window. I'm going to initiate my Social Security, okay, because my hope is in my Social Security. And I said, hi, I would like to initiate my Social Security, start drawing payments. They said, you have to make an appointment. I said, I'm here. No, 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 no. You have to make an appointment by phone. So I'm going, they, they take it a lot more easy, easily than they give it. And so they're going to call me on January 20th. They're going to call me on the phone and start the process of initiating what they could have done <laughs> and back in December. This, my, where's your hope? See, that Jesus has written an inheritance check. And, and you, won't, you won't be on hold for 41 minutes. And you don't have to go through a bunch. You, you accept him as your savior. You realize that what he did on the cross, he did for you. And you become part of the elect. And he has written your inheritance, and he signed that check in his blood. And there's a phrase called, you could take it to the bank. I don't know what you take, but you could take this to the bank. If you are a believer, you will cash your inheritance check. You will. Because it's kept in heaven for us. It's, it's his promise to us. The Holy Spirit, Ephesians says, the Holy Spirit is a guarantee in us, a deposit guaranteeing what is to come, our inheritance. You can trust that. It will be fulfilled when Jesus returns. Until then, until then, there's a couple challenges. Let's look at verses 6 to 9. Ha! Didn't think I'd get there. All right. I can just tell you ahead of time, we're not getting to, ver we're not getting to verse 12, sorry. <clears throat> All right, verse 6. In this, okay, in this, in this promise, in this you greatly rejoice, though for now, for a little while, 
you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine. Your faith will be proved gen- proven genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. So until he comes and you cash your inheritance check, we are going to face all kinds of trials. Not a woohoo in the house. <laughs> right? Because who wants to? None of us want to. There will be real grief. He says you will, you will face grief. There's real struggle. Grief is not fun. This is not fake grief. And this is not grief that you want to ignore and pretend it's not there. You will face real pain and grief in this life. There is real struggle. Trials. Parasmos. Adversity. Affliction. Trouble. Known and allowed. That's the part that gets us. Known and allowed by God. Which serves to test, prove, and develop one's character, faith, and holiness. What about this known and allowed by God? It has to be because what do we believe about God? We believe that God is sovereign. Sovereign is a big fancy word. It simply means he knows it all. He has all the power. He's everywhere. Okay, he's all-knowing, omniscient. He's all-powerful, omnipotent. He's everywhere, omnipresent. So he is either sovereign over the trials and problems that you and I face, or he is not sovereign at all. It's all or nothing. He either knows what's happening in our lives, is involved in what's happening in our lives, even when it's hard and we'd rather not be going through it. He's there or he's not there at all. It's all or nothing. He's sovereign over it or he's not. And he says that he... He is. He says, we will face these, these trials. Sometimes those trials are a consequence of our own sin. God wants us to face that. He wants us to work through and grow and demonstrate that even in facing the consequence of what we have done wrong, that we are trusting him and letting him work through our lives. That's what he wants. Even when you have to face the consequence for your own actions, for your own sin. But sometimes it's not about what you have done. It's, it's one that, a trial that is sent by God. Why? To develop faith and character. So God knows where he wants to get us. Where he wants to get us is the development of his character in our lives. And we're over here, and he wants to get us here. And sometimes the only way he can get us to a place where we don't go, won't go, is that he has to take us through things that will get us there. Tom Landry was the Hall of Fame coach of the Dallas Cowboys. I never liked the Cowboys. I don't like them today. Back then, back then, I respected him. I didn't like him, but I respected him. Why? Because of Tom Landry, a man of honor and integrity. Here's what Tom Landry said. He said, my job, my job is to get a group of men to do and go through things they do not want to do in order to get to where they all want to be. 
They all want to be in championship Sunday. They all want to hold up the trophy. They all want to see the confetti. They all want that. He said, but they all, all aren't willing to go what's, through what's necessary to train and to go through the pain and to face the injuries and to gut it out in order to get there. My job is to help them go through things they won't go through, wouldn't go through in order to get to where they want to be. Where we want to be is the character of Christ. What he knows is there are things we won't voluntarily go through. So he brings the tests to forge it in us. And that's, that's how we get there. Fun? No. Real grief? Yes. Pain? Uh-huh. Affliction? Mm-hmm. But God is at work getting us to a place we would not voluntarily go on our own. It's all kinds of trials. The Greek word poikilos. It's where we get the English word polka. Not to dance, but many. As in polka dots. Various dots. Big dots, little dots, yellow dots, red dots, green dots, blue dots. Various dots. There are various trials. And the word polikos is only used two ways in the New Testament. The first way it's used is the various kinds of sins and issues and challenges and trials that you and I face. They're all different kinds. And the other way it's used is the various grace and provision that God gives us to match the various trial we're in. That's the only way it's used. So whatever trial it is that we're going through, God has a strength and a grace that matches the trial. And it's a different one for me than maybe Stan needs. A different one for me than someone else needs. They're all trials. They're various. God's big enough to give the grace and the strength you need for your trial while he's doing the same thing for someone else if we will receive it. The pain, the affliction, the adversity, the grief is real. The pain is real. But as we trust God, as we trust his truth, as we receive his power, then that strength at work in us makes him real to the world around us. You see, you can sit in this room today and say, I'm a really good driver. I'll go, okay. But you know where it's proved? Out there. Out there is on the road is where it's proved that you're a good driver. Anyone could talk a good game. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm having a great day. Praise the Lord. Everything's good. Everything's great. And then when it hits, if you continue to praise the Lord and trust him and people see that, that reality of praising him and trusting him is made real to them in you. And that's why he does it. Because we are an advertisement for God. We're his ambassadors. And part of that advertisement is forged in us through grief, through trials, through pain, through suffering. In it, he is glorified. Bob Barner's doing that in prison. He's there justly. He's there as a consequence of his actions. And yet, as Bob trusts the Lord in prison, and, and other inmates see that, they see the presence of God in another inmate, and God is glorified. Is he doing it perfectly? No. Is he happy to be there? No. Is there grief in his family? Yes. Is there pain and suffering? Uh-huh. But as they walk through it in faith, God is seen. How about the, how about the different pain and and suffering that we have seen here just in this body. Surgeries and, and financial ruin and relationships torn apart as people face that and cry and we cry with them and you see God working and they trust God in it. He is seen real in their lives. And God is made attractive. He is glorified. So as hard as that is, why would we rejoice? 
Why would we rejoice and go through this? Peter says, because we know, and the word know means more and more. This is a progressive relationship knowing. We know more and more his love for us and our love back to him and our love for one another. And the word Peter uses is agape. He has gotten from phileo to agape. And there's been a process in his life. It is the working out of our salvation. Our joy is because, not that we're facing a hardship, our joy is because God is with us in it. God is working in our hardship. He is working for us. Philippians 2, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation. Not work for your salvation, work it out. There's a reality of our salvation that works through our lives with fear and trembling. What's the fear and trembling? Fear and trembling is that we will miss it, that we will miss what God wants to do in our lives. Not Fear and trembling is not that you'll lose your salvation. The fear and trembling is that you'll lose the process, you'll quit the process of being transformed. Work out your salvation, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. To work out your salvation, now is this for a word, katergazomai. I didn't put up on a screen because who cares about that, right? Wow. But here's what it means. Katergazomai means to go through every battle of the fight. It is a battle. It is hard. There is pain in us being transformed into the image of Christ. And you face it in your daily life. It's not theory and it's not just spiritual. It's real and affects all of us in every area of our life. And to go through every battle, you're working out your salvation. You're demonstrating that you trust God, his power, his presence, his promises. And how do you do that? You go through every, every battle of the fight with God's help. You don't go it alone. God is at work. Jackie, what is it? Theo energio. Theo, God, energy. The energy, the strength, the power, the supply of God is how we do it. That's why we rejoice. That, that, that's the only way. Right? When you, when you sit before a doctor and they say, you have cancer. And some of them are really good about how they phrase that and others aren't. You have cancer. You're going to die. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. It happens to be true whether I have cancer or not. If Jesus tarries, I am going to die. But I'm planning to die with a living hope because of what Jesus promises. What he promises. It's the plan of, of God working out of salvation. That's always been his plan to forge us into his image, to make us like him, to be in relationship with him. And we, and Peter says, we are more valuable than gold. Gold, which is refined by fire, and if you refine it enough, you destroy it. But God does not plan to destroy us in the refining. You know that the gold does not last when it says the streets are paved with gold in heaven? It's not the gold. I, couldn't, I can't melt down my wedding ring and take it into heaven and go, here, use that for some of the paving. It's not good enough gold. You see, we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. The gold used to pave the streets of gold is a, a gold we have never seen. Okay, so this gold is valuable, but, but our faith, he says, is far more valuable than that because this will perish. You and I will not. We will not. We're being refined. So where is your hope? Is your hope eternal? Now, I plan to go on and do verses 10 to 12, but I had a sinus headache this morning at 5 o'clock in the morning. And so I, I went downstairs, had to beat the cats because they thought I was going to feed them. It's not yet. The cats get fed at 6, not 5. They can't tell time. 
So I got my sinus medicine in an ice bag, went back upstairs, and I laid in bed with an ice bag on my head. And, and it is amazing in my life that God has spoken the loudest and the clearest when I'm in pain. So I laid there thinking, I'll just catch another half hour here. And no, 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 God starts downloading. He starts downloading that there is an episode in Peter's life between verse 9 and verse 10. There's an episode that has happened that you and I need to, to spend some time in next week because it informs what he's about to say in chapter 10. And that's where, and, and so God's downloading all that. And so I get up and I, Marla can give you the sheet. I have a sheet with a whole bunch of panels for verses 10 through 12. Just took a big pen and scratched it out. God said, don't go there this morning. End it here. I'm like, okay. All right. So I don't know who has verse 9 as the pool. You win. <laughs> but you see, God, God will, will do that. He does that when we're in pain. He gets your attention. And, and, and it's not just for me because I'm a pastor. We're done, we studied John, right? John 10, my sheep hear my voice. The Holy Spirit bears witness to what he, what he wants to do about his word. There, there's, there's, a, there's an episode that, that I was missing. And now he wants that, and that's where we're going to go. That's, that's God leading us in truth. That's what he wants. That's what I want. That's where we want to go. It's the ongoing outworking of salvation in all of us. That's what he wants to do. Where's your hope this morning? Is it a living hope? The expectation of a good outcome that's guaranteed. It is possible and it is promised. It happens one way. It is in the person of Jesus. It can only be experienced for all eternity by turning to Jesus for salvation. There is no other way. We were following, we were, we were behind, I didn't point, point this out to Beth. Coming over this morning, we we're behind a car, had the whole bumper sticker on, coexist. Every, every representation of all, the, all of the different f philosophies and religions of the world. Man, and that, that bumper sticker sounds so good. And we should treat everybody with respect and kindness. We should, especially as believers. But all faith claims are not of equal value. They can't be. They can't be because of what Jesus said. Jesus himself is, I'm, I'm just telling you what Jesus said. This isn't the PIV, a patent, this is God's word, not mine. And Jesus himself what, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So that, that's the way, based upon Jesus' declaration. Salvation is the way to living hope. Do you have it? Do you have him? It is a conscious decision you must make. Accepting him, that what he did on the cross, he did not just as a story in the script, he did it for you personally. Where is your hope? Our eternity with Jesus is guaranteed. Is that where your hope is? Is it in something else? Is it in something less? It is in something that is dead. Where is your hope? All kinds of trials will continue until Jesus returns. But we can walk through them with his help, with his strength. He will carry us through. Where is your hope? It all comes together in the person of Jesus. Let's pray. God, thank you for living hope. Thank you for coming to us in the midst of our brokenness and our pain, our despair, our hopelessness, placing our hope in things we hoped and thought and were deceived into thinking would actually give us life, and after every turn and after a while, they all prove false. Thank you for giving us living hope in Jesus. I pray for all of us, for those here and those online, if, if you need that living hope, the decision is now. Make it. Trust Jesus. Just tell him, Lord, I, I trust you for my salvation, that you are the Savior. You're my Savior. Help me to live it out now. 
And the promise is through your Holy Spirit, you come into every believer and you empower us to live it out. That's our living hope, guaranteed. Thank you, God, that in these days, whatever circumstances they bring, and in the troubles and challenges that we're facing in this small family of faith, and, and many are, we all are at some point, and, we're, and if you aren't, you will, that we can encourage one another and we recognize the pain is real, the battle is real, the heartache is real, the effect is real, but you are with us and you will guide us through it. And if we trust you, you will be proven strong in our lives and you'll be proven through us to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Worship team. If you're able and willing, rise, and we're going to sing, yes, he can, yes, he can. Sometimes I wonder, is he faithful? Does he see me in my trouble? Does he understand? Sometimes I question if he's able. Can he rescue? Can he save me again and again? But, but when I look back, did he move every mountain? Did he part every sea? Yes, he did. So, yes, he can. Did he defeat the darkness? Did he deliver me? Yes, he did. So, yes, he can. Yes, he did. So, yes, he can. Sometimes those voices try to tell me I'm forgotten and I've fallen too far from his hand. But I know what kind of God he is, and I'm trusting in his promises. I'm believing, and I'm singing, yes, he can. Did he move every mountain? Did he part every sea? Yes, he did. So, yes, he can. Did he defeat the darkness? Did he deliver me? Yes, he so yes he can, yes he did, so yes he can, cause I've seen too much, now I can't deny, he's come through every single time, from the beginning to the end, he did. mountain did he part every sea yes he did so yes he can did he defeat the darkness did he deliver me yes he did so yes he can did he move every mountain did he part every sea yes he did so yes he can did he defeat the darkness? Did he deliver me? Yes, he did. So, yes, he can. Yes, he did. Oh, yes, he can. Go ahead. Mm. So, um, oh, am I on? You are. Yeah. Okay. You will be. I will be. Am I on? For, yeah, I am. Jeez. So, um, so yesterday, um, we had a... Pat had a FaceTime call from a dear friend of ours, Tom Gardner. Haven't gotten to talk to him for quite a while. So he says catch hi. 
catching up a little bit. He does. He says hi to all the all the saints. That's what he said. Um, so then at one point he, you know, Pat's sharing how he's doing and whatever. And at one point he goes, well, get your wife over here. You know, I want to know how she's doing. So come in. And I kind of peek in there. And he's like, so how are you? And I was like, well, physically, I'm really good. I said, emotionally, you know, up and down. Um, you know, bearing some burdens, taking them on. But I'm working through them each day with the Lord. He goes, that's good. So um, one of those times of working through them with the Lord was this morning at 5 a.m. when Pat woke up. <laughs> Um, a lot Sorry. of times, yeah, yeah, oh well, a lot of times I don't wake up, you know, when he's got a, a headache. Um, but I did this morning and I could not get back to sleep because my brain started like spinning with all the things that I'm carrying right now. And I was like, Lord, I know this is not from you, but help me because I can't shut this off. Um, so finally I thought, just get up, you know, just get up and go pray. So I went downstairs. Um, and uh, before I was going out in the back porch with my cup of coffee, I thought I'm going to look at what our little flip calendar is today. And Pat's going to close with that verse, but I knew it was from the Lord. And I knew it was like, this is what you do. You go out on the porch and you work this through with me this morning. And um, he is faithful. He is faithful. I, I just want to, yeah, I just want to, no, I don't. I, I just want to encourage you if, if in anything you're stuck, like you heard him saying, you know, sometimes I wonder, is he faithful? And, and you don't come to the conclusion that he is or something blocking that. That's why we're together. Talk to someone. Pray together. I mean, that's, we, we, we call it, you know, Holy Spirit counseling. We come together and pray and ask God to show you because he knows. He knows where the blocks are. He, he knows where the obstacles are. He knows where the pain is or the wound or whatever that you're believing that lie and it's causing you to respond in a way that is less than what God wants for you, this vibrant life. And so that, that's why we're together. You know, pull somebody aside. We'll, we'll talk with you. We'll meet with you. We'll pray with you. Um, that's why we're together as a family of faith. So hear this sort of as a benediction. It's from Philippians 4, 7, um, different translation, TLB. God's peace, presence of God, regardless of the circumstances, is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in Jesus. And that's the key. Trusting in Jesus, the ongoing relationship. He is faithful. Amen? All right, let's get hands and feet loaded. Did he move every mountain? Did he part every sea? Yes, he did. So, yes, he did.